Great to have you back on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go a little bit uh, back in uh, history and share with you what happened on this day, the 28th of July, many years ago. I'm going back to 1984, and uh, good thing, we're currently uh, witnessing the Tokyo Olympics. But of course, on this day in 1984, the um, 23rd Olympic Games opened in Los Angeles. Um, this, of course, started in 1896. That was the very first Olympic Games. And since then, there's been about 28 Olympic Games and um, about 23 Winter Olympics held uh, you know, over time. On this day in 1984, the 23rd one um, opened. It marked the second time that Los Angeles had hosted the, uh, the Games, the first one being in 1932. The official mascot was Sam the Olympic Eagle. Uh, the 1984 Olympic Games sadly were boycotted by a total of 14 Eastern Bloc countries, including the Soviet Union and East Germany. The, uh, these were also the first Summer Olympic Games under the IOC presidency of Juan Antonio Samaranch. The 1984 Olympic Games were widely considered to be the most financially successful modern Olympic Games. It, at that time, generated a profit of over $250 million and was preceded by the 10-week-long adjunct Los Angeles Olympic Arts Festival. Um, and so, um, good thing that we currently are, um, of course, experiencing the beauty of the Tokyo Olympics. Sadly, it's the uh, first Olympic Games, um, I believe, or maybe not the first, that has been held in a pandemic. Uh, so it's a little different from the regular ones, but um, it's still a very, very beautiful feeling seeing countries come together to enjoy themselves and play sports and compete um, with the very, very best uh, from their countries. So yes, 1984, the 23rd Olympic Games took place in Los Angeles, opened on this day in Los Angeles. And now to something not very, you know, exciting. In 2002, there were uh, miners that were trapped in a Curic, uh, in a place called Curic, actually. They're called the Curic, uh, or Curic, I beg your pardon, miners that were rescued after 72 hours being trapped in Pennsylvania. This happened uh, in 2002. It was a rescue that took place in Pennsylvania after they had been underground for 77 hours. And I'll share with you from July 24th, to July 28th, and that is, you know, maybe the longest time that, you know, they, they've probably been on the ground. It happened after a disaster. They had tried to get into a particular uh, mine that had been abandoned, and a disaster struck. These miners were stuck there for the next four days. The structural geology, I'll share with you, um, of the area caused the flooded mine of the shallower Sagsman mine to be at a higher elevation than the active Kukrik mine. With the mine portal entrances to Q Creek nearly underwater, rescue operations started almost immediately and um, ended four days later. And none of the miners suffered from decompression sickness. They were all transferred either by helicopter or by ambulances to hospitals. The primary cause of the water inundation was the use of an undated and un uncertified mine map of uh, the Harrison Number no. 2 mine. That's too much big English. But anyway, on this day, <laughs> these miners were all rescued. There were nine of them, um, actually. They were all rescued after 77 hours um, on the ground. Um, these stories make me always remember that, you know, at every time in Nigeria when disaster strikes, we, um, and I said yesterday morning, that we don't seem to learn a lot from disasters. We don't seem to change. We don't seem to improve on our processes. Once we find something to blame, case closed in Nigeria. Once we find a person, you know, that can be blamed, that's the end. We don't, you know, improve on the systems. We don't improve on the processes, you know, to prevent those things from happening. And this, you know, I'm saying this now because of the uh, Ibano supermarket fire. Some, same thing I said yesterday morning. Once we find a person to blame, that's the end of, the, of it. There is no improvement um, on, um, you know, what must be done to prevent, you know, this from happening again. And also, if this happens again, what are the processes that must take place to ensure faster or quicker response time and, um, you know, the ability to save lives and property? So imagine that we have nine miners, um, you know, trapped on the ground here in Nigeria. Do you, you know, do Nigerians have faith? You know, that there would be helicopter ambulances or there would be, you know, immediate uh, medical response to get these people out of uh, uh, that position. Maybe not. But anyway, that's what happened on this day in 2002 and also in 1984, the 23rd uh, Olympic Games.
We're moving into our first uh, discussion this morning. We have uh, Punabo Inko uh, Taria. He's a civil rights advocate joining us from Abuja this morning. And we're going to be talking with regards to Pastor Tunde Bakari and the Nigeria for Nigeria movement. Not necessarily about Pastor Bakari now, but the idea of, of a movement. Um, and, uh, you know, the ones that we've had in the past, do people still trust these movements? What does this mean? for the 2023 general elections. We'll get into that after this very, very short break. Stay with us. <laughs> 